Hello, and welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm Will Forge, and today we will forge. Um, today, though, we have a special situation here. You can see there in the corner, there's a little video down there. We're going to make that full screen. Let's see. And we're going to go ahead, and, and what that is, what's special about that is that that is finally our video from Clint. Clint has made us a video to make the, the shroud move. I'm going to try and... Uh, Realize that you need to hold down the back button to build it out because these are all dynamic objects and they're gonna need to be uh, sort of reloaded because you always want to do that. You want to load in fresh. And we have a lot of objects in this. Um, why won't it? Oh, right. I have it locked. That's why it's orange. Okay, I need to unlock it in here. Let's see. We got so many of these folders I need, still need to figure out. Or like, you know, move around just keeps on, you know, uh, what do you call it, crashing on me whenever I try to use it. What is this prefab here is the question. Okay, we're going to select it. We're going to get out. We're going to hit the... Ah, oh, it's this thing. My, um, it's my, uh, you know, test piece. So is this fit 150? Nowhere close. Okay, so cool. We can just add the rest of these to it. I think we are going to put these in a prefab. Now, <clears throat> let's see. I have pre-watched the video and sort of studied up on how he's going to do it. I haven't started actually making it, though. And uh, I am so excited because <laughs> it's a really cool, clever way of doing it. Um, kind of blew my mind. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're going to switch over to it full screen now. Uh, I'm trying to remember how to do that. We turn off the display for Halo Infinite. And display capture. Nope, not that one. Uh-uh. That one. Oh, that was Halo Infinite Audio that I turned off. Okay, this was the actual video. Okay, cool. We'll turn off this one, too, because it's just going to be in the way of our video. And uh, hit play. Let's go. I don't know how many people are in chat yet. Maybe I should forward until there's more enough people in chat to be uh, worth hitting play on, but I don't know. Maybe not. I will hit probably play on this video multiple times, so it probably won't be a big deal. I'll just do another show full showing later on in the video. Um... So, yeah, here we go. Let's hit play and watch this. Hey, what's up, Will Forge and all my cool stream viewers? Today, we're going to learn how to make things move up and down. So I've built this beautiful contraption here that's supposed to represent the waterworks shroud. And it's all made of dynamic objects. So the important part here is that all the objects are set to disappear if they get touched. So they are synced between the server and the client. We'll take care of that this morning in the script. So to control the rising and falling of those objects, I've got three pointers on the scene. One that has a monitor area, and it's to access all those objects. One called ascending control, and another one called descending control, which we'll talk about later. So let's dive into the script. So we've got three variables, one to track each object's original position, one iterator, and a list for all those shroud objects. When the game starts, we grab all the objects from the area and we store them in our objects list. Then for each object, we store the original position. And finally, we trigger the ascent. So the ascent is where things get interesting. The key here is that for each object, recalling the damage object node. This is crucial because it lets us have multiple translate object nodes at once concurrently. That's why we needed those two pointers earlier. On the ascending controller pointer, we have an on damage event. When this event is triggered, we do the following. 
Increase the iterator, grab the object at the position in the list, delete and respawn it to counteract the delayed spawn we set earlier. And finally, we move the object up 85 units over 7 seconds using an ease in out qubit curve. If we look back at the ascent function, we'll see that we wait 8 seconds before starting the descent. The descent is pretty much the same as the ascent but in reverse, and the object fall back to their original positions. And that's all there is to it. This waterworks shroud is now up and running. And that's awesome. Okay, uh, I want—I just want to talk about how ridiculously clever this is. Um, and like, yeah, he's got. Um, okay, first of all, okay, he sets it up, of course, with everything. Um, the r ridiculously clever thing is using damage to trigger it, because the servers prioritize damage above like everything else. It'll just—it didn't even occur to me to do that, but like. The servers want, try to make sure so that the game is like competitive, that a damage, a little bit of damage that's dealt to something is really fast data that can be, you know, received, you know, by the servers and by the uh, by the player very fast, so that they can instantly have you go down if you uh, if you suffer damage. So he's taking that priority of damage above everything else, and he's using it to trigger a function faster on both server and client. That's like keeps it in sync, which is really clever. Um, and then by dealing damage to the object. And then he's got it to where every single time it triggers, it's a separate function so that like, it, if it, this one gets damaged and that one gets damaged, they can get damaged at the same time because it damages everything in the, in the area. And then it, uh, it translates that data very quickly and then the function runs as a separate function, so as a separate function you can run a different version of that function for each one. So rather than being one function that's going for each object and then sort of going one at a time through all the objects, you can have this one function run for every single object at the exact same time because he's got it separate, separated out like this. And it's so smart. It's so damn smart. I didn't... I, yeah. It's just like yeah, I don't know. It's just so smart. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and start just basically try to recreate this um, in Waterworks and apply it to the uh, to the to the pump shroud. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. And we're gonna talk about it some more. I mean, like I said, whenever we get even more viewers in, I'm going to be talking about it again and again and again. So uh, let's see. Here we go. Um, okay. So we've got our pump shroud. The one thing that I, I do think I may add to it is to verify that the object that's being damaged is not a vehicle. Because I don't want to... I think it's ever... This is all... Oh, no, that's right. That's right. No, no, there's not going to be a vehicle up there whenever on start, on game start, so it's not going to add it to the variable, so that won't matter. It won't matter. It's going to use... It's only going to damage stuff that's there at the start of the game, and there's not going to be any vehicles up there. That won't matter. Uh, at least I don't, I don't, I don't believe that'll actually matter at all. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's just completely brilliant. Um, let's see. Gameplay. We're going to go to scripting. Pointer. Pointer. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. We've got our two pointers. One of them is going to trigger the up and down. The other is going to trigger uh, the. Uh, it's going to be our volume. Now we're going to make a. Uh, we're going to adjust this one. We're going to make it a. Um, let's go back to the beginning just to show that. We've got 
above it we have oh you know what <laughs> I haven't made a false I haven't switched back to MCC yet have I I mean not MCC to Halo Infinite here we go and we got our thing down there okay here we go so we've got our, our our volume above it we need to create that volume let's get a screen that shot of that okay, create that volume that's going to envelop the pump shroud ours is going to be square because it's going to need to be like rectangular longer in one direction than the other uh, so gotta bring it up so that we can actually see it okay and then we want this thing to be about in the middle so whenever I adjust the that's not quite in the middle but that is length so, uh, is it the width yes that's it um, I think we're gonna go to 50 and see how wide no definitely not enough We'll go to 200. Uh, probably too much. 150. And then we will figure out how much we need to adjust that in a minute. Let's see. Hey, what's up? It will only damage the pointer, which is not a vehicle. Right, right, right. It just uh, damages the pointer. What am I talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. It doesn't script. It doesn't. It's not scripted to damage the each object in the thing. Dam each object in. Yeah, it just damages the pointer for each object in the thing or whatever. Uh, if I remember correctly from yesterday and from listening to it just now. Um, but uh, the point is that yeah, we're gonna go through it. We're gonna talk about <laughs> everything about it again as we go too, because um, it's uh yeah. And you can fill me in on anything I misunderstand about it, about why it's so cool. Because I know I can look at it and be like, this is amazing. I'm actually going to put this pointer outside the map and make it really tall. So let me do that, actually. I've got this big old rock here now because of the, the opening. This opening over here required me to put it, make a big old chunk of rock. So uh, it's going to have to be really high. Getting to the top of the map. I really did eyeball how much space I would need for this map. Pretty luckily, very well. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. Um, let's see, because I think this shroud will fill up. I may not. Hey, am I going to uh, need to have it so that. Um, Am I going to need to be able to move... See, the pointer moves up and down too, right? Or does it just the objects in there? That's one thing I'm wondering, because if the pointer moves up and down, I might need to move it lower and put it inside the rock. We're just going to go to 500. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, this is... This is exciting. <laughs> Okay, we have not quite everything enveloped. We need to go a little bit lower, and then it will cover everything. I know it probably doesn't have to be 100% covered. It just needs to be inside of it. Let's rename that, actually, before I go move on. Um, let's see. Um, this is the volume. Let's see. Uh, the pointer is only for the initial movement where we store all the shroud objects into the list. Right. So yeah, the pointer will... It, it won't matter if like uh, uh, something else gets up inside there. Yeah. Duh. I was thinking about that last night before I went to bed, but I wasn't looking at the uh, code in front of me, so I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to do that. Um, I was thinking I was worried about it. It was basically my QA brain was going we need to make sure that this doesn't break in this way, and this doesn't break in that way, <laughs> instead of being like a programmer brain. Um, area. And but yeah, so, okay. I'm gonna name everything the same as yours as well, so that the, uh, so it looks the same in the uh, script. And is easier, to, what? Oh, I clicked away. Object, crap. This is insanely clever. How'd you come up with the idea to do, use damage to do it? And it will only grab dynamic objects, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, uh, vehicles are dynamic objects, right? And so are, um, uh, what do you call it? 
weapons, but because it only grabs them at the start of the match and no one's going to be flying up inside here before the match starts, so that won't be a problem. That's what I was thinking about, is that someone would fly a Banshee in here and then get out of it and they would start grabbing their dynamic objects out of the out of the area. And then I was like and, and it was just like a thought. It wasn't like a thing I really necessarily uh thought you know, thought would actually happen. And it will only grab yeah. Um, let's see. So descending controller and ascending controller. Whoop. Or was it control? Doesn't really matter, I suppose, between the two. Because that will be close enough. That in the uh, script, they'll look the same. Oh, nope. Is there a reason you use, use underscore in Forge, or is it like uh, just just left over from programming? Because I, t you know, in programming I do, but in uh, in Forge I just like <laughs> drop it. I drop the practice. Um, but yeah, it, but it might be that you're it's, it loads faster or something. So I want to know if you know if if you have a reason, for, a specific reason for doing it, or if it's just a practice thing. The damage object method is the easy way. There is a method with. Mo with or area monitor, which is much funnier, but also more complicated. Okay, what do you mean by funnier? It, like funnier is in like it doesn't work super reliably, or funnier is in like, uh, it, it's like, it it's just hilarious how it functions. Like on a from a programmer's perspective, it's just you know hilarious that this works this way. Um. Okay. Let's see. So now we've got that. We need a script brain. Scripting, script brain. We'll put this up here, I suppose, right next to these pointers, so that they're easy to locate together. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see. Um, so now, funnier by being a mega mess. Gotcha. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna go into that just to make sure it actually loads that one whenever we want to all of our references later. So we're gonna need all of these references because. Let's see. I think I have everything, right? Yeah, I think that's everything. Alright, wrong button. Here we go. I was just scripting a uh, the stalactites uh, yesterday and was uh, actually running into an issue with uh, uh, effects and trying to time them correctly. I don't know if- I don't think that's a scripting issue. I think that's a- the effect puff too slowly for the dirt. So like, I can't predict the player's about to break it, activate it, and then let it time just right. But if, and if it ha happens as soon as the players deal damage to the object, then the puff of dust is just like, you know. And another one called descending control. Uh, it's just, um, you know, it breaks it, basically. Uh, and I, uh, sort of got the timing okay, but that's the closest I could, I could get. Don't forget to set all the shroud objects to despawn if they are disturbed. Yes, thank you for reminding me. I would have made the entire... Um, these are all the same object, I believe, so they should all be able to be edited the exact same way. Yeah. Um, there is still that one object that I've got, like, inside of the other object down there, and I think that might be a problem for this. Or else it won't work in custom games. Yeah. That's that was also really clever. How did you come up with that? <laughs> like, let's see. Where's the area where you had the display of everything set up correctly? Um, timer's off, but abandoned and disturbed is on. And then you put your delay to one oh, to one hundred and eighty. So That is really cool, and I wonder specifically how that works, and how you came up with that idea. That's such a clever one <laughs> as well. Um, let's see, and then there was, was there one other thing that you showed off a section of settings, or was that what I'm thinking of? Oh, it was this. It was a cylinder. You were showing off the size of it. Show was off. Yeah, team neutral. So, okay, cool. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we can go back to the script. Let's see. Someone from the script guild gave me the tip. Brilliant. Brilliant. 
it, was it someone who had gotten the leaked version of the game and all that stuff? A, a version of Forge? Oh, I didn't, I didn't need to re-reference them. I guess while I had them selected, I should have probably referenced them. Um, if I use select this, I have a question. I have them all prefabbed. If I go in with them prefabbed and... Oh, I don't even need this, do I? I don't need to reference this because I'm grabbing everything in the volume instead. I don't even need to select this right now. Okay. Yeah. I, I only need references for these pointers. And then I fill a script. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Almost forgot. Almost thought I had to reference the uh, the prefab there. Uh, add object reference. Do I, what do I have? I've got the object grab, descending controller, and ascending controller. Put descending under. Desc ascending makes more sense than putting it the other way around. So that will make it. Let's see. I just asked because I had the problem, and he gave it. And he gave me. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how prefab will work because they don't work well in custom. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to do what it was doing to my version of the script that was like grabbing each object in the prefab where like I had gotten something to work really close to right, but it was, if I didn't even tune the timing right afterward because it was moving, I don't know if you remember, uh, I don't remember if you were in the chat. Whenever I did that one, I don't, anyway, uh, it, it would move the entire, I made like a little tiny section of wall to move up, made out of six segments, uh, and as it was moving up, the problem was that the blue object would move first, and then everything else would start going up, so it was always ahead by like almost half of the block, you know, it would go, it would start moving, and then the other ones would start moving, and, uh, and they were all moving in sequence, but it was like above the rest. And my, the only thing I could think of to solve that at the time, before I, you know, before you created this one, which actually works, uh, was to maybe make another object outside the map and set it as the blue one in that prefab and move it up and down outside the map and ha allow it to move faster than everything else and not be seen, but then everything else is moving in sequence. But it wasn't, um, I don't remember if it was working on the server, and I think that was the problem. But yeah, okay, here we go. Sorry getting distracted. Uh, players, objects, path, logic. Okay, uh, my brain is going dead. Uh, vector 3 isn't here, right? Yeah, vector 3, okay. Declare vector 3 variable. Um, declare vector 3 variable. Okay, and I, I saw this, how this vector 3 is just a, you're just making a zero vector 3 variable here, so it's not an empty um, node on the, uh, or not node, an empty, uh, point on the node graph or whatever. Declare number variable. I forget what those are called. These are called points, right? These little circles. I don't know. I actually don't know what those are called. Um, let's see. Um, declare object list variable. Shows how much I know about, um, about, uh, node-based, you know, visual language, like this. Um, mostly I'm just, uh, like how clean you put that so close, but let's see what we got here. We've got the original position. Um, we're gonna need these later, I believe. Um, so you didn't even worry about making identifier and go into it. You just named it that to save on nodes, which is a good idea. Um, I was also trying to do uh, sound, and couldn't. I don't know how to make the sound even work. Do you have to like load up an actual game to make the sounds um, play out? Okay, uh, because I was trying desperately. You know, make sure I don't typo anything between these, um, or else I will be very confused whenever it doesn't work. Um, and you've got your objects. Let's see, identifiers are whack. Yeah, yeah, identifiers are like... Easy mode, I guess? Uh, as far as like keeping it up, but it, then it, it makes your, your code look confusing. 
that you either have to create a ton of them or you end up with these lines all over the place to just add extra confusion to what's happening in the in the code which I've just been adding because I don't know if uh, other people are going to be able to very quickly identify it. Like, the one thing is that it's a big old red box, like, just telling you what's there, you know what I mean? Um, so, for newbies, uh, I mean, I'm kind of a newbie myself, still, for, you know, I'm, I'm, I have, my knowledge is all in line code, so I'm kind of a newbie myself. Okay, so we're going to scroll over here, object reference. Now, um, we need, that's object grab, and we need an area monitor. Um, let's see, which is a, uh, where is area monitor? Is that, is that in objects? Where, where, where is that? I forget. It's definitely not in logic. Um, no, definitely not in there. Um, let's see. Is it, uh, is it in events or something? Game mode, inventory, logic, math. Uh, I always forget where this is. Like, I'm pretty sure we had to look for this every single time with the other ones. Is it in variable? Oh, it isn't. Okay, there we go. Found it. <laughs> I'm sure you're in the middle of typing up what it is. And the only thing that's going to prevent me from seeing it yet is the delay in the uh, get objects and area monitor. That's going to be objects. There, no, not what the heck. No, oh, I thought I was in the objects section. Whoop. Uh, would get area objects in area monitor is that's in here, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, I thought so. I thought it was going to the objects section. I don't know how, but yeah. There we go. If I was looking at an object variable. Set object list variable. Um, where's that one? Set object list variable. That's probably also in objects or objects. Uh, uh, or objects. No, objects transform. Set, oh, variables of advanced. Right, right, right. Set. Let's see. I'm letting you struggle. Yes! <laughs> We're gonna, I mean, it's be probably better for me to struggle a little bit and, like, learn where things are, so. I appreciate that you are, you know, <laughs> that you're, that you're helping and then, but then let me, uh, learn as well. On gameplay start is, because learning, you know, if I just am told where everything is, I may never commit it to memory, you know. So, I'm not like, you know, I'm not upset about you let, making me, letting me struggle. Um, let's see, there we go gonna make it even look like yours because it's so clean um, I mean it's yeah it's a logical way to do it for each and for each object and as soon as I get this in here I'm going to go back and um, oh, I do need to change that before I move on let me not move on and forget to fill in these um, you know this information let's see otherwise objects Scope, global, object, empty, and uh, yeah, let's see, on gameplay start, yeah, nothing else I need to fill in, okay, cool. Uh, for each object, that one's an easy one, it's in the events, no, <laughs> it's in uh, logic, I mean. Um, Because that is the main thing. Like, I've been building the map for so long, I've forgotten everything I learned about where every node is. <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's been like, yeah. I've been committing to memory all of the muscle memory to avoid the bugs. Get object list variable. Um, what is that? That's an object. Get object. No, or is that? That's in variables, isn't it? Yeah. That's in variables advanced. Get object list variable. Um, there we go. That's gonna obviously it's a variable. It should be in variables. Identifier objects, which is what we just generated. Um, let's see. Identifier objects scope global object empty. Okay. 
and then we're going to yeah okay nice and clean um, for each object and we're gonna do these things that are just off screen and then I'm gonna stop and we're gonna go back over this and we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna play your section on it first and then we're gonna talk about it and stuff um, trigger custom event global because it's so cool okay that's an events right is that an events custom yeah yeah there it is okay so on completion we're doing this <laughs> yesterday I had a problem in my um, stalactites where I was trying to trigger the next thing as an execute per object and I was like having all these troubles and it suddenly clicked on, clicked into place and I was like oh I need to do this on completion and fixed it and immediately started working almost and I had to do some other tweaks because it was the special effects as well uh, set vector 3 variable variables is that in basic or advanced? I think that's in advanced yeah all the get set and stuff like that are in advanced Vector three variable. Need to remember that. I was saying that out loud to remind myself for next time. Uh, but also, in case anyone watching does not know how to uh, where these things are, let's see. Um, okay, so we got get object position, and that I think is in objects transform get object position, and we're going to take the current object. And we're going to feed this in as the value. And change the identifier, of course, as well. I'm going to grab all of this and make it cleaner by moving it over. And um, we're going to go with the identifier is original underscore position. And uh, let's see, we're going to have to set those things for the trigger custom event volume. Um, scope is object why is the scope empty okay there it is nope not global object um let's see value see do, 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 do. this one needs to be uh, identifier send there we go okay i think i've got the entire line set up and we can hit play. We can rewind, hit play on the video, and listen to what I also set this up. So we'll, we'll go back to there. So we've got three variables: one to track each object's original position, one iterator, and a list for all those shroud objects. So when yeah. the game starts, we grab all the objects from the area, and we store them in our objects list. Then. For each object, we store the original position. And finally, we trigger the ascent. Yeah, so it's very straightforward from what you've already told us. Um, that, yeah, this one is pretty great. It just like creates, grabs everything that is in the, in the, uh, the pump shroud area and it commits it to a list. And then it proceeds to use that list uh, and starts a global event. It resets the uh, the original position for each of them, and then it's, and it triggers it, which is this one right here. So this one, which was starting out at zeros for you know the 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 um, for this uh, you know variable, and it sets it. I have that set to global. I don't think that's set to global. It's supposed to be set to object. I didn't change it. Whoo! Let's see. Yep. Object global global. I didn't set this one to object. That would have been a Travis. Look, I'm learning. I not local object. I think that happened in a previous uh, time you were helping me, and it took me so long. Oh, this is weird. I just realized um, I'm seeing chat in OBS, but for some reason, if I change to live chat, it'll reload. There we go. There we go. You're saying you're letting me struggle. This this is, uh, I think you were letting me struggle here too, unless it just uh, was such a small thing on the screen that you didn't notice. But uh, yeah, I had the uh, sub scope object or er, set to scope global right there still. Um, let's see, uh, and I believe that that is something I did at least once, <laughs> at least once, whenever you're helping me with the, uh, with it a long time ago, uh, with the older versions of the code. Um, there we go. Now we're going to go to the next thing, and that's where we go down here, and we create our cu the custom event, the on custom event global. Um, and we set it to ascend. Um, so, 
on custom event global. Yeah, I can't see the text. Email. Yeah, I'm going to have to zoom in a little better um, so that I can show everybody uh, who's watching uh, in general. But you are you on your phone or because unless you're on a monitor the same size as me, I doubt you would have been able to see the text. And even then, the uh, yeah, you might have, um, you know, uh, <laughs> let's see on custom event global. Even then, it might be that my resolution is ridiculous. But yeah, so we have this. We've got the scope object, scope global, global, um, and we grab. We ha we uh, you know the object uh, grab is the um, that pointer up above the map. Um, it's an area monitor. Monitor. Uh, we're, we're declaring it basically an area monitor, and we're getting the objects in the area monitor, and then um, on gameplay start, we are applying all of those objects to an object list, which is called objects and it's a global list because we want to be able to use it um, and then get object list variable um, see, for each object uh, you know we're getting objects that list we just made and for each of those objects in it we are uh, per object original position uh, you know we're, we're setting the get we're getting the objects position and then setting it as the as its uh, location in the original position variable, which is set per op scope to object. So basically, we're able to see, we're able to commit that uh, copy of this, this uh, if it's of an object's original location, back into the um, into itself. You know, into its uh, into a, a variable stored inside of itself. And then we're triggering the ascend. So then we're moving on. I just want to zoom in and do it so people can see. It does occur to me that I'm the only, I, that I can see whenever I zoom out really really far, but it might be a little harder for other people. Set number variable. Let's see now. That is set number variable. And then for each object, um, I will say. That I hope that at some point they implement something like snapping to this, like onto a grid, not like a grid in the background, but like a sort of a virtual grid that will try to make lines straight. Um, that'll like try have a snapping point for each line, because just just for my my I, I, I like it to be perfectly straight, even though it shouldn't. It doesn't need to be. Get object list variable again. Where did we get that again last time? And I don't want to copy it because of um. I would just copy the one, the other one, for this instead of trying to find it. But um, uh, Forge Lord said that uh, if you copy notes, I don't know if he's fixed that yet. Actually, Clint, you might have heard. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it since he uh, said that if you copy nodes, they can sometimes break the uh, the game. Let's see. Get uh, objects list variable. Obviously, that will be in here. Um, but yeah, it's. Um, where if you copy a node and then you go to delete it at some point, which I doubt I'll delete any of these, but still, um, if you go delete it, it will not remove it from your like uh, list. You know what I mean? From your um, object, your ma your your total objects list or whatever uh, at the moment. So scope, where's scope? There it is. Uh, oh, it's why is it doing that? There we go. Um, is global because it's uh, the objects full. The objects um, variable we created earlier. Damage object. Oop. Oop. Come on now. Um, it's also kind of in a way. I'm being your uh, QA for your your tutorial video to see how well people can understand it. And you, you, so far, I understand it perfectly <laughs> as far as I'm aware uh, from yesterday. At least yesterday I understood it perfectly, and then today I said things that made no sense that would have been that would have required me to uh, not understand it. But that was because I thought of those in the middle of the night whenever I was, should have been sleeping, but I couldn't uh, because there was a baby crying, and I was trying to soothe her. Um, object reference. Oh, by the way, Clint, I had a baby. Well, my wife did, but we had a baby. Um, let's see, object reference. Um, I don't remember if you... <laughs> I think you were away at the time whenever that happened, so I don't know if you know about that. Object reference. 
Oh, right. What am I talking about? What am I looking for an object reference set node for? It's over here. Okay, this is a sending controller. Sitting here being dumb like, where is the object reference node? It's like, there is one, and I could find it, but it'll be blank, and then I'll have to go into the, the like, you know, the list and find the object in there, and that is not what we want to be doing. Let's see, wait in seconds. Is that in logic? I think it is. I used that one yesterday uh, a few times, so I actually remembered where that one was. And the ascend, I'm going to go with the eight seconds, because that looks perfect to me. I think, I don't, whenever you're doing that, and then we'll tweak it to fit, uh, if there's anything to change about that for waterworks, to, I'll, I'll turn both waterworks, and we'll watch them either move side by side. Congratulations, I knew, but still congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> uh, and uh, it just basically, um, uh, let's see, trigger custom event global. Where was that again? That was custom events, of course. Trigger custom event global. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, we'll just, we'll just, we may tweak the timers, but this does, I did, in your video, it looked really right. So I know you, you have already tried to tweak them to fit, uh, I don't know if you were comparing it side by side, but you definitely fit, made it um, feel right, even if you uh, didn't. So, with the eight seconds and then the three seconds down below. Um, let's see. It's a good ratio, is I guess what I'm saying. Damage amount needs to be changed um, from empty to one. Oop. You know it's disappointing, Clint, that you've probably seen before as well, because, because of all the scripting you do? Uh, is that whenever an object is damaged uh, by a player and that object doesn't have internal health, it doesn't send the amount of damage it's supposed to send. Now this is just a copy of the other one and it's vital for the thing. So I am just going to copy and paste these. Which is going to look horrible and then we're going to rearrange it. Um, but uh, you know what I mean? Like you, It's like, okay, I want to make it to where when a uh, like let's say a raw I was making selectites and whenever it got took damage it would break but I wanted to make it so that each weapon broke it according to the damage that weapon deals out but to do that I'm gonna have to make it so that every single weapon is tested for individually because they don't have it to where you can test for groups of we weapons like a weapon type I mean they call it weapon type they literally have it called weapon type, but they, that means the battle rifle versus the assault rifle. So it's kind of like not really weapon type to me. But yeah, the whole scripting is disappointing, but also awesome. But yeah, the damage amount is really sad. I don't know why it's not sending through, like, how, like, that seems a no brainer to me, and I think they're probably going to argue. That's something to me that I would expect to see on like a first, like on a, on a demo version that doesn't have that. And it is in, dim, it is in uh, beta. Oh, I do need to, ah, I shouldn't have copied this one because I need this one. Um, object is that one. Okay, so now we have, oh, and this needs to change to three and we need to change everything to descending instead of ascending or else this is just two of the same function. Oh, I never set the identifier for this one. Convenient. Now I have to. Now I can set them both separately. Um, but he, uh, yeah, the damage amount is really sad. We could have achieved greatness. Exactly. Just, just wait. I'm sure that's something they're gonna add, because like I can, I can feel how they can just make a little extra variable to store the da the damage in, or recall to an older variable to, to that has the damage, and be like, yeah, if this object doesn't isn't a, you know, isn't one that has health, then send this damage output in the uh, node instead of nothing. You know what I mean? Wait, it's not a sending, it's a send. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's, uh... Don't want to add an ing. Uh, and then break the entire code so that the first time we try it, it just doesn't work. Um, uh, identifier descend, and then I'm going to check to make sure the other nodes in this are... Oh, there are there aren't other nodes. Descend, okay. And then we're going to set over here, that's already set to descend. This one needs to set to um, ascend. Because once they get... That's... Um, 
You know how whenever you say a word enough times, it doesn't feel like it's a real word anymore? I, I just got to that point in typing a sin that didn't feel like it was spelled correctly, but it was. And I, I had to check yours. I was like, that doesn't feel right. No, it is. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's see, I didn't set the iterator on these uh, or any of the values here. So whenever I copied it, I kind of shot myself in the foot because now I'm going to set it for twice. Um, like a dummy iterator. Wait. Now that... That definitely was not spelled correctly because I dropped the T. Um, and then the value will be zero and the scope will be global and the object will be empty. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think that basically I would expect that that's something that they're going to tweak because they're because of uh i think a lot of people have requested that change about the damage by the way you might have a problem because i think there's a limit to how many objects can be translated at once okay i i if that's the case then i will rebuild the vent er, vent shroud the pump shroud um i almost said vent shroud uh so i'll rebuild it and make it simpler um, that's what I was saying in, whenever you asked me uh, in chat how many objects, in, in DM, how many objects were in it. I, I'm imagining uh, the hollow hexes and making them larger, you know? Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> make it two. Um, so basically, uh, the... Uh, essentially, yeah, I, I was thinking about maybe using the hollow hexes making them a certain size to where they they look good and then uh basically doing that oh this is just way lower that's why it looks so much different than up above okay so we've got damage amount is one on both of them um the timer is different eight and three which makes it change how how long it waits before it drops again um iterator global empty iterator global empty objects Global empty, there we go. Um, send and ascend. Ascend and descend. Okay. Um, and then we've got, uh, I think, I don't think there's another section of the code, right? I think that's it. Oh, there is, there's a whole other section. What am I talking about? Yeah, duh. This is the section that actually does the thing. These just trigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This just damages the object over and over again. Uh, and that makes it move down here per object in the list. Uh, let's let's save this before we go any farther, because if I end up making doing something and it crashes, I'll lose everything we've done so far. We're gonna save it twice just in case it like corrupts one of the save files or something. Um, okay, so we've got ascending controller, we need another of that. I will copy that because Oh right, you have to paste. That's not how. That's not the um, duplicate. That is weird. That there's. I don't think there's a. Is there a duplicate? Yeah, there is duplicate there. Okay, yeah. I was just thinking that the hotkeys function differently than that, but it doesn't. It's just another option. On object damage, events. On object damage. So like the damage amount here reads out zero, and then you've got to like test for. Okay, well, okay, well, if it's zero. How much damage uh, does this weapon do? Okay, we're going to make it apply this much damage. And how much does this one do? So I was considering making it a uh, set number variable that if I if I felt like making it to where like a pistol doesn't one-shot the... Um, uh, my, my solution, let's see, set number variable, um, was that, uh, that they have to... Um, was that I had to make it to where pistols could one-shot, you know... The, um, the stalactites because otherwise like if I make it to where it takes like 10 pistol shots to kill the stalactites and that means it takes 10 rocket launcher rounds to kill the stalactites too um, unless I go and uh, you know um, unless I go ahead and uh, make a um, let's see we'll go to math sorry I'll finish that thought in a second um that and one because this is iterating on the um, uh, current object that's uh, being used oh right it's here that's what I'm looking for hyper and B is one 
could have just typed it, but oh well. Um, but yeah, basically, um, I could test to see what the weapon, the, like, be like, yeah, take the player, get the player's weapon, what type of weapon is the player holding? And then I could do that, and I could make it so where there are different groups, and be like, if the weapon is any of these, then, um, then deal this much damage, and if it's any of these, then deal this much damage. And I could, like, sort of, like, be like, yeah, power weapons are gonna one-shot it, pistols are gonna take, like, ten shots, uh, pistols and assault rifles are gonna take ten shots, and then like things like the um, like the uh, heat wave, maybe take it out a little bit faster than um, than ten shots, like maybe five shots, and then that would be a thing. But I just didn't, I, I didn't, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that would be worth it to add all those nodes <laughs> to make that would be so much, so much testing? And I don't know if that's going to slow down the reaction time of it breaking or what because of all of the testing it would have to do. And if the player shoots and then switches weapons like in the same moment, will that cause a new project or a new problem? Uh, objects. Where's objects? Uh, delete object. And that was my, I don't know, my consideration. You think there's going to be people making very logical like sections of code that you can just drop into any that's actually the problem actually it's script brains if you make it a, a prefab and put it on the website or on the file share you'd have to go into it and copy and paste all of the text from one script brain to another I don't even know if that's possible get object list variable get object no it's on here it's in here get oh, where am I what am I looking for It is in not in objects, it's in variables, that's why. Um, but you you said, you, you answered my question, let's see. Uh, I was gonna warn you about the weapon switching, lol. Yeah, exactly. I was like, as soon as, uh, my, my QA brain can see the problems with it. Wait, that's in plug it straight. You do that into a get object in index, right, duh. Um, my QA brain is able to predict the problems that can come up with things, and sort of try and find, like, workarounds, but I'm not you know, as versed in the code, so I don't know if there's another ver workaround at this point. Um, let's see, get object at index. Where is that? Um, is that in... That is a weird one that I don't think I've actually seen. These are set. I would need to be in get and get object list and get object variable are not there. So is it in objects? Get object at index. I haven't actually used that yet. I haven't actually used an index at all yet. Um, uh, pretty much don't ha haven't had to do that yet. Um, but yeah, I, I wish that they would like sort the weapons into some logical Let's see, let's let's go back and set these before we move on, or else I'm gonna end up um probably forgetting that it's not set. Whoa, I'm so glad I saved a minute ago. Whew. That is why I saved. Because I've seen crashing during scripting before where you just go into that menu. It really is that that like objects menu. But what did I do wrong? There sometimes it'll happen because like you have two nodes on top of each other whenever you go into the menu. And sometimes it'll happen with like when if you go into a menu into the menu while forging and like two dynamic objects are like that are um set to use the physics are like in the same location. It'll sometimes break. I don't remember if that's if you go in the menu or if you uh try to like hold down the back button to play the game. Or if it just crashes sometimes. I don't remember. The point is that, that seemed uh that seemed like I can't think of anything that I did wrong specifically there. So it must have just been some weird thing. I need to save more often though, because now we're going to rebuild that line of code right there. I mean, it's a line of nodes, I guess, really. Not a line of code. We're on version 2006 right now. It's crazy. I need to, um... I was going to look into seeing how to make the resolution on my streams higher. Um, but it just, it doesn't have an option for that, and I don't know why, uh, I guess it can't go higher than my screen resolution. So I need to get a better monitor, or it's something about my graphics card, and if that's the case, then I do need an upgraded graphics.
graphics, graphics card eventually, so I could theoretically get one, but I don't know. <laughs> um, but that was uh, that was a little unexpected. It just crashed in the middle of of coding, and it's almost back up. Um, but yeah, the uh, a new graphics card would be great. A new, um, but that's very expensive. So not right now. Um, but yeah. It's, um, I don't know. I'm just glad I saved it. It's like I could feel it, the, the crash coming on. <laughs> it's gonna load. Let's see. Taking a long time this time. Hopefully it doesn't tell me that it, like, lost connection. Oh, good. It looks like it's loading in. I was worried that it might be like, yeah, no, you lost connection to the server again. It's like, why? Why did that happen? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, dear lord. Where am I? Oh, there they are. Because I put them all the way up here. I was like, did it, did it not save? What's going on here? But yeah, no. Okay. Um, whoops. Okay. So, we have both of these lines, and they were all done, and we were working on the next one, uh, fortunately. Um, yeah. Like a sixth sense. Okay, let's pull this up. Of when things are gonna crash. Okay, here we go. Object, uh, on object damage, here we go. On object damage. Um, that one's in events, no, no. Wait, what am I doing? Is it on, yeah. On object damaged. So now we're gonna go through all this. But yeah, so I don't know. Maybe one day they will update and add the ability to get a proper amount of damage or add the ability to, um, you know, search by like group, like damage type, like it doesn't deal fire damage or lightning damage or, you know, kinetic set number variable. Um, oh, for some reason my brain just went dead. Variables, advanced, set number variable. Um, and then uh, whenever they add that, we'll be able to either just sort it by how what type of damage it deals, or sort it by, you know, maybe kinetic weapons take a little bit more, because I got to chip away at the rock before it falls apart, but then, like, the, uh, the, um, hard light weapons would pass right through the rock and damage it very heavily, so that would cut it down very quickly. In the case of my stalactites, I mean, get number variable. Um, there we go. Add, that's in math. I need to focus up and get us back to where we were because I'm talking and it's slowing me down. <laughs> Let's see. Um, operand B. That's just as fast as typing it if you type if you click it fast enough. Uh, iterator. <laughs> iterator. Global. Connect that to value. Yeah. And then iterator. And the uh, scope is global again. There we go. We're going to save it again. That was the one we were setting last time because I had to go back to it. Okay, now get object list variable. We don't see infinite. You don't. Oh, shoot. Okay, sometimes whenever it crashes and comes back up, that happens. And the only way to fix it is to. Let's see. That's MCC. Um, I had a thing that allowed me to work around this from time to time, but I don't know what happened to it. So, okay, okay. I'm just gonna add a display capture. That captures that screen because I usually use it um, I typically don't do that I have it capturing just infinite and the reason is because I wanted to um, make it to where if anything pops up it doesn't uh, it's not visible um, here we go is it that one nope that's not it this one okay there we go now that should make it to where, no, now you can't see anything else. 
Where's the one that I have turned off? Okay, I've got Halo Infinite turned... What, what's going on here? Okay, I don't understand what I'm looking at here. Oh, okay, I see what I'm doing here. What I'm doing wrong. <clears throat> Let's see. It put it at the top. That's what I'm doing wrong. And I'm moving around something else. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay, okay. Halo Infinite. It'll be right on that layer, right below the, uh, there we go. The Halo Infinite display that I usually use, and I'll just turn it off typically. Yeah. Okay, so basically the reason that that happened is because of, uh, yeah. The, um, give us the gameplay! <laughs> um, yeah. The reason that happened is because I didn't have the, uh, is that why we I lost viewers? <laughs> it's because I wasn't showing uh, anything. Okay, let's see. Delete objects. We need to find a delete object. Um, the uh, let's see. Delete object. So yeah, it was um, that happens whenever the game crashes sometimes and whenever it reboots. It uh, OBS doesn't always catch that it's uh, been turned back on. Get object to index. Get object list variable. I don't think. Get. Uh, yeah, that's in variables, not in objects. Um, but yeah, so that's that's why that happened. But um, it's kind of annoying. But no, and I thought I had made this solution in a previous stream whenever that happened. But uh, I guess I didn't. Oh, I don't want to click on that until I save it. It's, it's that button right there that can break it. In here it is. If you click on this button, it can break it. Um, you know the the list of items. In forge mode, it'll it breaks whenever you go into that a lot. Something about building out that list under certain circumstances causes it to crash. And I don't know what those circumstances are, except for that they've happened a lot. Get number variable. Oh what? Nope. Advanced, get number variable. Um, my brain sometimes goes, number variables are simple, so that should be just variables, even though it's get number variable. And I'm like, yeah, totally. That's, that's totally a thing. It's like, no, all the get stuff is in the uh, advanced section, iterator. And I did spell that correctly, right? Oh, whoops, I didn't set the um, scope. Oh, jeez. Scope to global. Keeps doing that with like nothing in that mi in that list. Okay, bring this real tight. And then we can move it over here. Whoop. Make it look nice. Okay, so we've got a spawn object. Let's save it again before we keep going and have another uh, another sa another uh, crash. Let's see. Objects. Uh, spawn object. Whoop. Put this object in there. Make it just far enough so those lines don't overlap. And then, uh, set vector 3 variable. Let's see, variables advanced. Set vector 3 variable. Boom. Are you planning on releasing like a prefab of this? Oh, what I was going to say was about the brain that you can't copy. It's, I, I don't, are you able to copy script from one brain to another? Get object position. That's something I'm, I'm not sure about, so I thought I'd just ask. I haven't tried it. I don't think I tried it. I don't remember doing that, ever. Let's see, value. I can tap this. Hopefully this doesn't crash. <laughs> Original underscore position. Oop, did I type it? Nope. It did work. I thought I hit the O with the side of my finger. Let's see. And that would be a object. Right. Duh. That's its original position. 
And the object that we want is this one again. The current one. Brilliant. Okay. Now let's go ahead and save it. And then we're going to add vectors. Um, is that in math? I believe that is. Add vectors. I mean, if it says add, it's in math. Um, vector 3. That's in ver uh, variables. Vector 3. And also my brain always wants to think that vector 3s, since they're complicated, they have three numbers involved, would be in advanced for some reason, even though there's no reason to think that. Um, now this is another thing that is probably one of those things that's going to need to be tuned. You put it at 85. I think mine is more like at 200 or 150. So I'm going to do 150, which might make it move too fast. I don't know. No, that wouldn't make it move too fast, right? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, but the point is, I think I've got to move up like 150 for my, for my pump shot. Well, actually, that's like the whole height of them is something like 150. And we don't want it to go all the way into the ceiling. It's still a little bit visible. So let's do 120 and see how that comes out. Um, and then translate object to point. Oh yeah, I was trying to remember what the difference between translate object to point and uh, uh, what is it? Uh, move object to transform. Um, I know that the transform obviously you put in a, an object and that's is that the only difference? I, c I couldn't remember if there was a way that it functioned a little bit differently as well other than you don't just like plug in a vector into uh, the one that you or you move it to an object. Wow, that is perfectly lined up. Wow, cool. <laughs> oh, before we go in, let's save it. Let's see. Uh, duration. This is where it might take a little bit longer than 7 seconds because I'm going 120. Um, so I'm going to just up it to 9 and we'll see how that looks. Um, because... Um, well, no. Maybe not. I don't know, it'll make it move faster. If I, um... Hard to say, movement curve. Let's try, uh, what was it? It's just, you just left it as empty? Okay, or no, you didn't, what do you, oh, ease in and out, what am I talking about? I'm looking at mine, not yours. Ease in, out, cubic. That was, that was a, let's see, ease in, out, cubic. Don't put 9, put 7. No, don't put 9, put 7. Okay. Oh, right. That has to do... Yeah, there's a weight. That, that, that also has to do with the weight up top, isn't it? Yeah. Duh. And everything like that. <laughs> if you change it to 9, then change the weight in seconds of the ascend to 10. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Um... All right, so I will do that when that happens, like when we look at it, if it looks bad, because of the uh, the difference in um, I had it perfectly lined up, but I wanted to bring it in tighter so the whole thing isn't so wide. Um, and uh, yeah, this looks good. This looks really good. I think I've got everything set up. We'll go over. Oh, there's another line. <laughs> right. There's another row of of uh, of, of uh, parts below this. Um, of nodes below this original position. Just want to make sure that everything here looks good. Um, yes, yes. I think we've got everything here right. Everything's set up. Okay, let's save it, and we might see this thing move today. Um, we're gonna go to the next line of code, which is the uh, descending. Right. Okay, skip. Through the, oh no, it's the uh, on custom event global. No, it's not descending. It's the yeah, um, ascend and descend. Um, wait, is this below? Yeah, this is the next part, right? Or am I being crazy? No, this is back up to the middle where you're explaining things, and then you've got that. Oh, it was my yeah. Here we go. Descend controller. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was worried about. I was, I was confused for a second because I was skipping around the video. Um, let's see. Duplicate. 
I wonder if copy and paste works better than duplicate with the uh, bug that he's... I think I did ask him that. I think he said no, that they work the same. Okay, so I could literally copy all of this up to a point. I can do all of this and that and duplicate that. I had to mentally switch from Shift D to Control D. Um, like I always seem to have to do with this because it's not Blender. There we go. And move this up. Um, move this back here. Move this back here. And that up there. And now we have a copy of all of that, and it looks decent. Now we just gotta clean it up. And then we can um, start uh, start to fill it in. Okay, clean it up, make it look good. Um, let's see. That little tiny lack of alignment is going to bother me forever. Okay, and then there we go. There. And that way, I guess there's vector three, um, two with a, uh, that's going to. Okay, so now we set a uh, variable. Set vector three and no, not set vector three, get vector three. I misread that. <laughs> I said set vector three just to prove that I completely misread what was on the node and it doesn't even make sense because it would be it wouldn't be in the um the line of the main the main code there. I don't know what this line is called. To be honest. What is that line called? Do you know? Do you know Clint? Is that does that have a special name, Clint? Or is that just like a, a line? I feel like it should have a, a special name. Um like the logic, maybe? Something like that. The logic line? Original position. Uh, because it's like actually like running the um the code. Or would that just confuse things since that's there's a whole section on logic nodes but uh, they don't all go up there original position and we go uh, R and we hit this to nope I call the top line execution path and the other just value connection that makes perfect sense yep I like that object I like that a lot Let's see. Oop, R, not E. This goes to one. It's the execution path and the value connection. E's in sign. Is it good? There we go. I think that's that's everything, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Looks good. There we go. I'm gonna save it. Okay. Just do one more scan over the whole thing. Now I'm gonna see I'm gonna run it with all of these tons of objects. Make sure nothing is like blank. There's a lot of empties here. Did I not set these or were these not yeah, these didn't need to be set. Okay, good. Um, and, yeah, I don't think anything is wrong from yours, like, from copying yours, and, uh, yeah, I think we're good to try it. The question is if it will immediately start working with so many objects there.
that debug stuff has to do with my stalactites. Let's see. Hey there, what's up? We are trying to get the vent shroud. I mean, the pump shroud moving up and down. There it goes. So it's going a little wonky because of how many objects are there. It looks like some of them are moving higher than others. And it's definitely, you can see all this lag is creating. So I think, though, I definitely need to reduce the number of objects. And at that point, it's just a matter of rebuilding the shroud. We don't have to change the code because we don't need to reference. We're not referencing to specific objects. Whoa, that was some... Yeah, I definitely need to reduce the number of objects. <clears throat> that was pretty insane. It's a lag generator right now. Jesus Christ, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Too many objects. This is hilarious. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to this banshee eventually. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I picked up a, a battle rifle instead of getting into the banshee just now. Uh, and this isn't even on the server. This is just in Forge, where it normally works smoother. So this is hilarious. Like, as soon as it starts to translate up. But do you see that? It's like it's inverting up at the top. I don't know what I'm doing. What, what, if that, what's causing that? But, um... It's probably has something to do with the uh, with how many objects there are there and a bug involving that. But like this half is moving higher than the other half for some reason. Or it has something to do with the fact that it's a prefab and it might be processing something. Do I have a gap in my roof? Halo <laughs> 3 2007. Like, yes, accurate. Let me see if it'll even let me get out of play mode. I'm pressing the... Oh, it finally worked. Ooh -wee. Oh, and it started back up again. But it's not in build. Okay, good. It's not in... Oh, my God. Get out. Oh, boy. I'm pressing the button. And it's not... Okay, stay here, please. Unstable jitter. Okay, that's that's funny. Okay, so yeah, let's rebuild this thing. You should un-prefab everything. I agree. Uh, like in the whole map, actually. Eventually I'm going to. I'm going to put them all into their folders as I do it. Um, but this part in particular, I'm like, yeah, I want to un-prefab this especially. Okay, let's try this un-prefabbed, but I don't expect it to be any better. I expect it to be about the same. Probably move better, but not necessarily change the amount of lag that it generates, because there's still a ton of objects. Yeah, that was... Humorous. That was humorous. <clears throat> Let's see. 199 objects, lol. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I just did, though? I'm dumb. I should have just deleted the prefab. Because now I have to select every single object again to delete it. Uh, okay. <clears throat> So we're going to have to rebuild the vent shroud, or the pump shroud. I, I'm the one who named it the pump shroud, and so here I am uh, using the wrong name. So typically you can go up inside of here in Halo 2 and f like fly around in a banshee and sort of hide up here. And the uh, shroud coming down doesn't kill you. And it's very important for banshees to be able to hide up here whenever they're being like sniped at or whatever. It was a very kind of a vital part of the map. But unfortunately, given the circumstances, I don't think that's going to be possible. And either I'm going to have to come up with some other object that's like perfect to create the, a really creative solution that will allow you to still do that, or I'm going to have to do giant hexes. So the object that I had in mind was where is that? Uh, that's in is that in structures and uh, forerunner? No, th there isn't a forerunner in here. It must be in um, accents forerunner. You can also simply not enter that move. Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean by that? Simply not enter that move. Um, let's see. Ceiling conduit. Concrete block. Um, where are the hexes? Wait, where am I? How am I in UNSC? Why did I go to UNSC? It's Forerunner. I'm looking for Forerunner. They're up here. Ah, okay, here we go. So there should be, actually, are these flat panels? Or are these giant fins of some kind? Giant fins, I thought so. Um, 
it'd be really nice if we could somehow, you know, I don't know, scale dynamic objects. <laughs> or if they just have more scaled options. Um, because that has been my main thing for this. Uh, is how many objects I have to use because of how many I have to put in there. Um, okay. Which hex is it? It's, it's a hollow one? Do they name it hollow? Uh, no, they just have it as a type of hex column. Hex pillar. What is this one? Is this flat? No, it just looked weird from this angle. Okay, let's see. So, like, this is really tall, for example, and, like, if I were to, like, like, make this be a corner of this piece, like, if this was how this corner was made, and then I made the rest out of similar, like, hexes, similarly sized hexes, or, like, a, a line of them, I think there's one that's just a line of hexes, but I could be wrong, um, then I could theoretically build out the same shape with, like, just one pass around the entire thing, hopefully. Um, so I could do that, or there's one in particular that's really big and hollow, and I just wish I knew which one it was at a glance. Here it is. Okay, and if I set this to dynamic, what's the uh, what's the size of it? It doesn't have multiple size. Okay, so that was what I was afraid of. Um, like, I was afraid that it would not have multiple size options, and what I, but what I could do with them is put them inside of each other so that they, uh, or putting them next to each other or something to that effect, so that it would be partially hollow, at least, so that it would come down around these, like, line, these, uh, giant, you know, columns and stuff like that, and look really good, but at the same time, um... Yeah, I don't know. I think the, th the this line, a line of the smaller hexes is better, because that would actually still keep the interior hollow, so that the banshees could fly up around inside there. Whereas this, if this part hits you, you would die. So, like, you could just be on foot, and just jump, and then, like, or, like, repulsor yourself into the air, like, like maybe be over here, and if I built it out of those hexes, and you just were standing here, lined up with the, where that would be, and uh, jump, it would come down and hit you in the head and kill you. So, I don't think I want to do these. I'm going to do these. And, uh, we'll figure that out. We'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll figure out how to, which hex, hexes we can use, uh, is what I was trying to say. Um, before I got, like, a little, uh, stutter there, almost. Um, let's see. I don't know if I'm going to use this side of it. I think there's a better, yeah, there you go. That's the better side to keep this hex shape. But actually, not having deleted the original shroud is probably pretty good because that means I can, you know, I can use it as a guide for the shape because it was already shaped correctly. So that's okay. Um, we will delete it after. But also I'm going to go ahead and select all of it and put it back into a prefab so I can delete it all in one go later because it might be that only one of these objects is selectable by the end. Or like a handful of them. And then... I don't want to have to fly around and hunt for pieces. That would just be tedious, and I don't, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> Let's see. Ooh, do I have another one up inside? Another layer of them up inside of the... It might have been even more than a hundred and... Uh, what was it? A hundred and ninety-nine objects? Um, somehow? Uh... <laughs> Let's see, because it might be there might be some up inside the ceiling that I didn't uh, have selected before. There's no telling. I'm actually surprised it allowed me to have that many objects inside of a prefab. Ooh, nope, don't want to grab that. Whew, that'd have been bad. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Um, nope, don't want that, don't want that roof piece either, did I grab any other roof pieces, no, we're good, we're good, but yeah, I did see this gap, for some reason I have a hole up here, um, so is anything glowing that's in the ceiling, no, nothing from the central structure, we're good, 
all the way around. Is there anything over here that I miss? No. Looks good. Now there might be some up here. No, I only kept the ones that were... Okay, so there aren't any more up in the rocks. These are just poking up through the rock because of the way that it was built. Okay, so we got that. Cool, cool, cool. Now we need to... Um, you know what we could do? Let's just immediately... Uh, wait, what? I can't change these off of being dynamic because they... Probably because I have too many of them selected. Uh, that kind of gives me a red flag that there might be something that's not supposed to be in there selected. Hmm. There appears to be something there. Okay. I'm gonna let go. And then I'm going to undo... Shoot. Well, it doesn't need to be fully intact for me to use it as a guide. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll move on from there uh, and just start building out the um, the hex from these little pieces. Um, you can only set one by one. Okay, for the, uh, for the physics. Okay, cool. At least that tells me it wasn't, like, horribly breaking. Okay, what kind of hex am I going to use for the other hex... For the other part? Um, okay, there's the hex this hex pillar which is gigantic and would actually be very nice to use if I wanted it to just be a solid block like like oh my god that could just be the entire freaking thing um, but I don't want to use that for that here's a shorter version of that here's one that's solid okay what is this this is a just standard nicely thinish hex okay it's very tall. Maybe so tall that it would go outside the map if I raise it, so I don't know if this one's going to work. Um, like if I raise it with a script, would it allow me to raise it up out of the map <laughs> if it if it does go that far? What is this piece? This is, I think there's a half hex somewhere, and that would actually give me a flat edge. Um, and it's a really thin one. These are not thin enough. This is the one I just used for the corner. This is a very thin sort of standard pillar it's actually the same kind of used internally so I don't know if that's a good idea to use it because then this the uh, visual design will be the same and also it's not as thick as that horribly thick one but it's uh, it is definitely pretty thick so I'll have to figure that out if I use that one and then there's is this the one that's a half hex I'm pretty sure there's one that's a half hex oh it's a hollow Interesting. Okay. That could work. If instead of a half hex, I have it be... Instead of a, um, a single solid... Like a solid hex like that one, I use this kind. Then it would be full of these little hollows. That would sort of... Um, I could also put it inside of there. Just a tad. Like that. And have it move up and down like that. And then you'd have to be careful on the edge because you might actually be hit by the uh, one of those points. But other than that, it would be a lot easier to survive. Ooh, is this a straight line of them? Wait, wait is this the corner piece that I used earlier? Or is this a straight line? I think this is the corner piece I used earlier. Yeah, let's see. Um, F, F1. Oh, wait, duh, I'm done. The one is because I made a copy of it. So what was this other one that I thought was it? Um... Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a really weird shape. Yeah, that's not what we're going for. This is like a, a join between the smaller hexes and the larger hexes, it looks like. It's got uh, like a small hex line here, and then the large hexes here. So that's cool. Definitely an interesting piece um, for future to keep in mind, you know. Um, is this the one that was hollow? Yep, that's the one that was hollow. What is this one? Oh, that's the one we're on right now. Okay, so now we've got this one, which is also hollow, but different. Okay, so I think that if we move this one next to it, we can see what the difference between these two are. Okay, so this is one that would actually probably be better for the outer wall than that one. Uh, mainly because, like, its points line up differently, you know what I mean? I mean, actually, this one transitions into that one more correctly, but... This one would make the outer wall look like it's flat, rather than being 
like this is how I think of it. This looks dwarvish, and this looks um, like that right there looks dwarvish from like high fantasy. I'm definitely not gonna do this one or this one because these hollow ones are definitely better. This one looks like freaking Mordor uh, for the dynamic type, yeah. Um, so I just saw it just in, tech, in chat. Um, this looks like Mordor, giant spikes put, protruding from it. This looks like dwarf, like ancient dwarf. You know what I mean? So like, in terms of like high fantasy. So if I were to line this one up here, you know, so that that, that line lines up perfectly with that line, um, then I could theoretically do these in repeating pattern and it would look pretty cool. But if I go with this one, it's going to end up feeling more ominous and more... I don't know. This pump is kind of ominous. I don't know. <laughs> the Forerunner aren't, you know, especially ominous and freaky and, like, you know, frightening on their own. It's usually that they're uh, the Flood and the, um, you know, the Covenant's use of the uh, Forerunner stuff that's actually ominous. Um, but, yeah, okay, so... That is really cool and very useful for junction points and stuff like that, I'm sure, but not what we're looking for. <clears throat> what is this one? The half one, the half hex, look at that. So if I wanted, this is a design idea, a, 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 a question for visual design. So y'all tell me what you think. Why is the rotation point on this object so weird? That is really weird. Okay, well I just flipped it around. Okay, should I make it so that the outside is flat or not? Because if I use this one, then I could theoretically put the the like I could put it I could put it lined up with a bunch of these next to each other. And it would look flat and clean. Whereas if I use one of these, it'll have that sort of poking out, going in, poking out. I could just make it cool, actually. You know what? I could just use these to make it flat and then have a few places with this thing and give me a, give it its own visual flair for my version of the of the map. Is this another one, but larger? Because if this is larger, that's even better. And it's not rotating on a 45 correctly. There we go. Yes, this one's larger. This one will definitely use fewer pieces to make the entire shroud. So I definitely don't want to use that one. It's going to be this one if I'm going to use one of these. But do y'all see what I mean? Like, uh, do I want it to have those sort of vertical protrusions? Like the, uh, or do I want it like over and over again as a repeating pattern? Do I want it to be flat or do I want it to go, um, you know, with a different setup. This is really tall and flat. Um, I don't think it's hollow though. And it's literally designed to go up and down. This is the Halo 2 piston. That's um, really cool. I loved these in Halo 2. They were weird, but they're very cool. Um, tried to make it with the less objects possible. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is the smallest, or the, the largest, like this hex is larger. Um, these will handle the corners very nicely without and take up the least amount of space. Um, but if I build it, the entire wall with these, will that? This is the widest piece. It's also sort of flat. That's in this design set. Actually, does anybody have any idea about any other objects that can be used in a similar fashion in any other sets? Because that would be. Um, like something large and flat, because even if it's just a simple flat shape and not as cool as these hexes would become, um, I would still probably prefer that because if it's big enough, it's worth it. Th with these, I had to use these little panels because that was like the largest that those blocks became, but something like a bridge might work. Like Halo Reach style of looking for pieces, you know? <laughs> Uh, let's see if this one has any different sizes once it's dynamic. It doesn't. I didn't think so. Um, I kind of hope... I hit the wrong button. I kind of hope that they um, they go ahead and add more scale sizes for every object that isn't um, just the basic building block objects, because this is this is the, the hard thing about dynamic objects, is, is finding one that works. And yeah, it's just, um, yeah, that's, 
that's it. That's that's it. Finding one that works is the hardest thing. Just straight up. Um, I could theoretically make it. This would be wider than this piece by a little bit, which might reduce my objects by like one. But then the shape is totally off. I'd have to like flip it over with this one. And that would make the pump actually get wider at the top, which would be a little weird. Um, it would kind of ride in that, almost like there's supposed to be some kind of groove there. And then it would like that. Um, and it would block everything else and kill everything in there with that gigantic block that's sticking out. Never mind. That is not usable. Is this wider? I don't think it is. This is like the same width as these other blocks, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's slightly wider. This might work as a as a piece, but not sure. Um, the halo rings, the rubble. This is actually something that is really useful for debris that uh, you got to know is in here. It's the totem ring debris, and it, but it, it's really good rocks. You should everyone should make a mental note of that that there's broken ring debris in here. That's actually really just good rocks. So if you want to, if you're looking for that, um, let's see. Um, yeah, not really seeing anything else that's large and flat in Forerunner. Um, aside from that, I'd have to go looking for um, stuff. Let's see, glass, for example, would not work. Um, these are like not panels, as in large flat things. This is like computer panels and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, let's see. Railings, rubble sandbags, signs are, there's nothing like super flat in here. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to use, but these hexes look good so far. Um, is this concrete block large? Is it, is it larger than the ones that I have? No, it's not, and not by nearly enough. Um, let's see, okay. Yeah, I think we're going with the hex columns so far. If I find something better off stream, I will rebuild it again later, but for now I just want to see if the hex columns will work, if there's too many of them. Because like you were, you have, in your video, over here... As the ascent, but in reverse. You have... Like, it's all made one, two, three, objects. four, five, five objects. So the important and it was very smoothly there. The if I could reduce it to five objects, that would be amazing. So um, the we're going to see what I can do. We'll take care of that this morning in the script. Uh, I'm going to switch computers, BRB. Okay, the sounds good. Of I've Let's got three see. pointers on the scene. One that has a monitor this area. This is huge. And it's to access all those objects. This is really huge. This might work. I need one to have them one stacked on top of the other, obviously. And another one called descending control, which we'll talk about later. Is it too thick? Not too thick, no. So let's dive into the script. Interesting. So we've got three variables, one to track each object's original position, one iterator, and a list for all those shroud objects. That could be it. UNSC when the game road. Starts, we grab all the objects from the area and we store UNSC them in our objects roof, list. Uh, panel. Then what is this? for each object, okay. we store uh, the original see, position. Wall tech and extra. Finally, we oh, trigger okay. the ascent. Yeah, I think this is super small. Yeah, it is. Okay. So the ascent is where things Large. get interesting. Let's see. The key here is that I for think... each object, we're calling the damage object node. This is crucial because it lets us have multiple translate object nodes at once concurrently. That's why we needed those two pointers earlier. Let's see. On the ascending controller pointer, we have an on damage event. When this event is triggered, we do the following. Increase the iterator, grab the object at the position in the list, delete and respawn it to counteract the delayed spawn we set earlier. And finally, we move the object up 85 units. Okay, so I think we found seconds, this is definitely using an easy way. In and out this thing curve. is so big. Let me let me pause the video. I was listening to that as we went. <laughs> um, I guess I can just let it keep playing until it gets to the end. Since the start from the beginning, we'll see that we wait eight seconds before starting the descent. 
The descent is pretty much the same as the ascent but in reverse, and the object fall back to their original positions. And that's all there is to it. This waterworks shroud is now up and running. That's really nice. I know this timed with the video perfectly by saying that's really nice about the video, and that's true. I really meant the piece. But also, the video is very nice. <laughs> the video and the, th the piece. We have a piece that is wide enough to just about be the entire width of this area. And then, you could theoretically use something like this to bridge the gap, or just use something like this, which is already in position right now, to be a good bridge for the gap. And link them together, and then of course change the textures. Like, they're totally wrong textures, but that's that's easy. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, do I need to have something other than... Yeah, I thought I switched two of those, but apparently I didn't. <clears throat> like, we can switch the scratch metal to... Uh, what is it? Oh, we're looking for Forerunner metal. Uh, Forerunner, uh, Metal Simple, and then we can even use these different areas to make it really visually appealing, changing colors and stuff like that. Forerunner Trim, oh, we've got, which trim is this? I don't know what part of this this is, uh, trimmed. Is it this, oh, you know what, it's probably those, it's probably these side, uh, strips, and that they're just dark gray, so it's kind of hard to tell from here what's changing. But this is the actual... Wait. Yeah, this is the actual stone. Okay. The actual uh, concrete. Let's see. Go back up to... We could, for example, use Forerunner Simple as a starting point. And then they've got those, like, yellow stripes. Do those not go away? Because we can leave them, but they would be cooler if I could make them like, emissive or something. But yeah, I think this is, um... Really cool. I just want to get something moving right before I sign off, because i got to get going. But it's so close. The, the, the script is working. We just got to get something in here to move. Um, I'm going to have to use do each of these individually. So what I'm going to do... Is... Um... Hmm... I need to turn all of these off individually for uh, being dynamic objects. So actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to deselect all of these that got messed up anyway. And then I'm going to put the, the rest into a um, back into its uh, prefab. I'm going to select all of these. And not select my brain, because I'm about to delete them. Um, and my brain does not need to be getting deleted right now. That would be starting over from scratch while well, I just undo it. But the point is that, yeah. Okay, delete all of those. So all of the ones that got put out of position, almost all of them, are now deleted. Apparently I missed a few. And then we can, uh, yeah, just move the old shroud somewhere else. Yeah, I was thinking that. I was worried that I was going to use it to sort of, like, build the new one. Um, but you're probably right. I should probably just do that. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to delete these things that got out of position because that means it will move smoother anyway later on to put it back into position. I'm just worried that I was gonna since I was gonna use it as a guide to build it, if I move it, then I don't have the guide anymore. <laughs> and I have to start it over and build it from scratch. Which isn't a terrible thing, because I did it once, I can do it again, but you know. Anyway. I'll just move this whole thing over. Because I want to see it move. But I also have to get going now, and I don't want to sign off until I've seen it move, because I like the... Uh, I just want to see at least part of it move. So we're going to let this go. Without lag, obviously. It was moving before. It just had lag. Okay, so I can still be able to undo that. But before I do, I'm going to... I don't know if you can undo past going into the map like this. We'll see. Okay. 
So... Wait, what is that? Did I miss a giant chunk of the thing? Okay, now I'm confused. What did I do? It didn't move the whole thing. I must have not waited long enough after moving it. Alright, well that's just completely messed up at this point. Um, let me try undoing it. Uh, we have this one little ring at the very bottom that is, full of, that is still intact. Um, but the rest of it is all jacked up. So anyway, we need to move it over here. We need to wait a very long time because they're dynamic objects. And because they're hitting the concrete, or the, the top of the, the uh, cave, I bet. Okay, let's wait. A long time. Okay. And after we wait a long time... Gonna hit... We're gonna let it go. <laughs> and hopefully they actually move. Now we're gonna let the server catch up. Apparently I have some pieces up here. I'm going to have to delete those later. Hopefully they won't get in the way and make it uh, not work anymore. Um, I might just end up deleting the whole thing. Oh jeez, yeah, see, that's that's what's gonna happen whenever I start it. It still thinks those objects belong up there. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna... Uh, can't undo? Okay, well, we're gonna save it like this where it thinks that those objects are still up there, and then we're gonna delete it. And that will just get rid of it. And we will... I'll, I'll either rebuild it, uh, or something else, but... Uh, like later, but yeah. Basically, uh, where is that? I saw I selected something that I don't want to select. There we go. And then we can delete all of these. Okay. You see this piece? I know you moved to another computer, but I don't know if you were there whenever I... Yeah. Just delete and don't save. Yeah. That's good. That, that's what I think I'm going to do. And then we're just going to... And of course, I probably saved it between the last thing I did there, but I don't know. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now we're good. Now let's see this thing move. Now that everything else is gone. Beautiful. Only a few of those objects are set to dynamic. Wow, well, that was timed with the waterworks in Halo 2. Oh my god, that was hilarious. That sound effect is not scripted in yet. It just happened to hit right with the waterworks from Halo 2 in the background. That was insane. Man, that looks fantastic. It's only on one side so far. We need more objects, and so it's going to take up more of the um, processing power, but look at that. Clan, your, uh, your scripting genius is showing. <laughs> let's, let's fly up there in a banshee. Let's not just stare at it from below. I mean, the fact that we can see it from really far away is also fantastic, because it's not like special effects where uh you know where basically um you can't even see them you know from too far away but yeah movement looks nice it does i hope that filling out the rest of the shroud doesn't make it sort of laggy or anything because because I, this is only like half or a third no maybe even a fourth yeah a fourth of the number of objects it's going to need in the end but uh so far it looks fantastic and you can hear in the background the fact that it's not perfectly timed with the sound effects from Halo 2 throughout the rest of it, that I do need to tweak the timing, but it's very minute. Apparently I need to fix a hole in the roof. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is great. Let me get inside. I pressed the wrong button. I almost accidentally jumped out of... I was, like, thinking I was in, like, uh, forge mode or something. And this, this road is perfect. I don't think it's going to kill anyone. Like, you can still fit through here. Oh, it kind of blocks you off over here, so if I have to use the same road down below, it might kill you if you're over here, because that'll totally just slam right into you. So you won't be able to go around this side. You might be safe in this spot. Let's see. But this road is, like, a brilliant find. Like, really lucky um, that it exists, but yeah. And it actually looks really good on the inside. I mean, it looks kind of human instead of Forerunner, but the Forerunner metal option. Oh, this is the side where that um, that panel, I think, is on the underside. So I just pick a different option for the panel, and it would look a little better. 
I also feel like I need to add, you know, scratches and rustiness and stuff like that so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't moving up and down. So it looks like it's like digging into the ceiling, but like, this is literally how it happens in Halo 2. There's not like a hole for it to like fit into. So, um, it's just sort of rock up there that it goes into. So I'm not too concerned that that looks how good that looks. But I could theoretically add some static objects around the rock that just sort of make it look like there's a tunnel there. Um, and just leave the rock above it. You know what I mean? I think that would work. If I wanted to make it look really fancy. But man. That is so cool. Oh man, that's exciting. I can't wait to see the whole thing finished. I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna have to finish it off stream, but I think I might make a short, like a one minute video of just making it work. Uh, d did you happen to have any idea on how to do the sound effects for it? Because I haven't done any scripting sound except for whenever I was trying to do this right here, which, uh, nope, that's the, that's the other one. Um, this one is the one I was still in working with. I have a little work lamp. <laughs> uh, where I was trying to do sound, but it wasn't doing anything. And I have no idea why it wasn't doing anything. And, uh, while you're here, I figured I'd ask if you know anything about scripting sound effects. And then I'd sign off. Because, uh, yeah. Man, it's not lagging anything out or anything. I mean, I'm not on the server. I will have to get on the server, but... That's the point of your script, is that it works well on the server. No idea about sound. Yeah. So this is the this is what I got for the stalactite. It takes damage. It falls. There's a puff of smoke, but it never is timed perfectly. It falls. It hits the ground. It falls apart. I don't know if there's anything. I did make a delay there to try and. It used to fall as soon as you press it, but I put a one second delay to try and make the smoke, which is delayed just because of its own animation. Uh, so there's nothing I can do about that with the script unless I can predict you're going to shoot it ahead of time. Um, but yeah, basically if. Um, yeah, anyway, that's that's a thing I've got to deal with, but um, what I also have to do is make it to where while this shroud is moving up and down, uh, smoke, uh, dust falls from the sky, which might make it lag, and I don't know if I can do that, um, and i got to make a sound effect go off. So, man, I cannot wait. This is all, like, really uh, interactive at this point. And then... Ooh, this should kill you. I think I, I haven't tested this yet. It does. Very good. Uh, <laughs> I hadn't actually like tested the kill volume I set up down there to make sure I had set it up right. Or in the right spot. I was thinking about uh, making it... Tell me if this is crazy. Or a waste of um, resources and time. Um, but making it to where there's a splash effect, like outside the map. And whenever you fall down there, as soon as you would die and splash through the water, the splash effect teleports to your location. And like triggers. And then so it goes, psh, you know, right where you hit. And uh, would be more convincing as water. Because as it stands, if you look really closely, you can even see the grid shape. Like right there. Right there. There's a little faint grid line. Because it's a bunch of these little energy shield doors that you can't scale. Over, like, placed next to each other. And I'm hoping that eventually they make those scalable. Because I know they are making the effects scalable eventually, and this might be one of those things that they're scaling. Anyway, I'm just getting sidetracked. I need to get off. Uh, I was just going to ask you if you knew anything about sound, and you don't, so you don't, you haven't done that yet, so yeah. Um, I was watching a YouTuber that did it, and um, about the destruction, and he was helping me, like, like watching his video was helping me. His video still didn't, I had to make a lot of tweaks to it to make it work for mine. But yeah. Yeah. I think that that would be cool, with the splash. And maybe make a sound effect of a water splash if there's a uh, option to do that, but yeah, it would be more definitely more convincing. You should not be too res. Uh, should not be too resource hungry. Yeah, since I'm just making one splash and then moving it to the player and making it splash, which means that if two people die at the same time, it'll like move it to one of them, splash, and then move it to the other one, splash, and it'll be really wonky, but it won't be the big deal, uh, I think. And I don't need two. I think maybe I could make two of them and make it to where if someone of this team goes down there, someone of this team, and then what third one for neutral players, and then that would make it much more clean, but I don't know. Maybe not. That wouldn't probably be a good idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, but the point is, this sound effect thing didn't seem to work in my script over here. Uh, I'll figure that out off stream. I'll find somebody who made a, a tutorial video or something like that to explain sounds, because I'm flabbergasted by it because I don't have like even the sounds it might like I've got 
this is something that's also weird. I've got, um, where is it? In, is it in settings? Or it's in here, I think. Uh, I have sounds set up that I don't think are playing. Well, the primary sound is silence, and I don't know what that means. Does that mean it turns off all, all of ambient sounds? Is that why I'm not hearing anything? Um, because I had it, I had the primary sound set to silence to see what it sounded like, because I thought it was going to be like a weird echoey kind of thing, but you know, hope you're having a nice Monday, Will. Oh, some stuff coming in for Halo soon. It, yeah, for Halo, yeah. Is it? Do you have like leaks information? Like with the, with the, um, or are you just talking about our Forge stuff? Uh, <laughs> um, the, uh, cause I'm, uh, I'm wondering, cause I, I, I want to know all the leaks. <laughs> um, but yeah. Hey, Mr. Greencastle, by the way, did you, uh, did you see this? Were you, did you just come in? Cause if you just came in, then I gotta show you what Clint accomplished for us today. Uh, what I just, uh, based, I copied word for word from his script. Uh, and then set it up with these pieces. Look at that. My lips are sealed. Okay, so, so, so no, no leaks. Ha ha ha. What are you talking about? <laughs> Man, that looks good. Those yellow stripes, I don't think I can get rid of them, but, uh, as part of a swatch, but that's fine because they look really good. You just came in, check, do you see this? Clint set us up. Those are multiple pieces moving in tandem flawlessly. I haven't built out the rest of it and it's just a matter of building it because the way a script is set up it grabs everything in a volume uh, to, and then puts it into a um, a uh, like a list of uh, an objects list. So I literally just build it out, put it, set them to dynamic and it's going to grab them at the beginning of the match and then it's going to start moving them. So like yeah, all I got to do is build the rest of it and it's, it's going to look fantastic. We already have the upper part there. I don't know what I'm going to do with this lower part here. Um, I guess I'll have to find another piece that works as perfectly as that road piece. Right? It's fantastic. Um, I wonder if that road piece is going to be the right width for this side panel too. Anyway, we'll find out. But the only thing is that I had to rebuild it because uh, it, it works perfectly, but then it, it starts to lag if there's too many objects in it. So I had to delete the old one that was made of like 100 plus... 100 and, I don't even remember. It was like ridiculous. It was like 100 and something. Um, OMG, I can't wait to play, uh, this. Dude, you're so awesome, man. Uh, well, this movement is all Clint, so it's not just me. And this is why I want to put, I don't know if I did yet, I want to put Clint as a col collaborator on this map, because this is a huge part of the map. I want him to have partial credit for this. I want to be in the, uh, in the credits on the map itself, because <laughs> this is huge. I don't think I've done it yet, but I need to. Um, yeah. I can't wait. And then the, the stalactite is almost functionally done, and then I can start copying it, moving it around. I'm going to delete this other one that's not in the light, because it's garbage. It had a different version of the smoke thing, and it wasn't good. Yeah, respect to Clint. Exactly. <laughs> I did a similar thing yesterday on the pit, made the pop-ups and targets move and stuff. Oh, man, those are so cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're doing that. Real quick, does anybody know if I can just put one block up here instead of two? I've got player blocker and vehicle blocker. Is there like an, is this, I think there's an object blocker. Does that block everything? Do I not need to put like three different blockers? Because I'm okay if them, if someone throws a fusion coil outside the map and it not explode. So I kind of like that there are two blockers here because it doesn't involve other objects like fusion coils. But I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm supposed to be, I'm trying to sign off. And my wife is waiting on me and the kids need to do their schoolwork and everything. So... I think I get get going. But I did ask that question, so I'm going to wait two more seconds to see if anybody's replying. That's why I'm flying around. I can use glass. That's true. Glass can be 10%. Yeah. The lowest level of glass would just block everything. It would also block fusion coils, though, so maybe I should just keep it as these two different blocks. Um, and I think your dead body won't be blocked by this either, because technically that's not a player anymore. I think it's just a ragdoll object. So, like, if you get blown up and flown through the air, your body will just fly right outside the map, which would be hilarious because then your camera would still be visible and your camera would be trying to watch your, the person who killed you and you'd be like, what the hell? <laughs> and that would be your final moments <laughs> before you respawn. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should block objects. Anyway, the point is, I gotta get going. I think uh, it's it's a shame because everybody, I just got like immediately a bunch of people jo joined in. Um, I'll do the uh, shroud one more time to see how cool that is. And maybe fly or fly up to it in a banshee, and then maybe grab a um, 
you know, go up to the um, slag tights and shoot them down as well, because they're not done yet, but they're... I like it. I like them. I put that one second delay, which is making it to where... Okay, here we go. Boom. Oh my god, it signed with Waterworks again in Halo 2. You heard the sound effect from Halo 2 in the background from Master Chief Collections. But that was not actually this one. Uh, that's hilarious. Boom. <laughs> that was a second time it is timed perfectly. You can even ram this and it falls. Oh, this is the old one. This is the other one. The other one broke. And I don't know why it does this. I, I, I saved it as a prefab then placed it as a prefab. And it fa falls like that for some reason. But this one, you can ram it and just be like, boom. And it takes a second and then it falls because I was trying to time it with the smoke. Because the smoke is dumb. Um, but what I'm going to probably do is either not worry about it. Maybe I could just make smoke falling there all the time? I don't know. But this one drops so breaks and drops so clean that I think I'm just going to keep it like this. Um, but yeah. Okay, yep, I'm done. I, I gotta get on now. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. Uh, and by the time I get back on, hopefully this shroud will be 100% done. Uh, I think I'm gonna be able to build it out while my kids are doing school, because I gotta sit here, they do their schoolwork there, I help them do their, their school, and I forge, because I have to do something while I'm sitting here. Uh, and they're doing their stuff, or else I sit there trying to help them too much, and then they don't learn anything. And that's, that's a thing that's like, no. I, I'm sitting there like, you know, reading entire words for them, and it's like, you gotta learn to read those words yourself. You're literally learning to read. But anyway, that's so exciting. Okay. Yeah, I'm just signing off. Let's go. <laughs> just had to do that real quick. It was a, an urge, a whim. So yeah, that's exciting stuff. This is a massive breakthrough. I think that it's like practically done now and then I have to do the, um, uh, you know, obviously I've got to finish the shroud, finish making the stalactites work, place the, copy them to place them everywhere. I did, by the way, regular copy that one and that one broke properly. It was just whenever I saved it as a prefab then placed it from my prefabs menu uh, that it broke it and made it to where they fall, fall, fell one at a time. So I don't know if my shared version on the shared drive is going to work. So, because everybody else is going to end up um, with the same problem. So what I'm going to probably have to do is either tweak the code. Maybe I'll take a page out of a uh, cleanse book and make a script that spawns in each of the objects when they when when a uh, uh, you know a pointer takes damage, and that way I can deal damage to the pointer and it'll run. And it'll spawn in, and it'll like, you know, and we'll end up having them spawn in in tandem. That way, whenever it becomes a prefab, it'll work for you guys exactly as it works for me in my version. So that you don't have to manually recreate it from scratch just to make it all function at the same time. Anyway, I already said I was leaving, and you'll probably, if, I, if I'm guessing, have already started to leave. Yeah, there's already people starting to leave. So I'm talking to no one except for the YouTube video at this point. So, yeah, well, there's four people in. Uh, it says. But anyway, the point is that, yes, we're good. I'm going to uh, end the stream, and uh, I'll catch you guys next.